Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'm reviewing Devil House by John Darniel. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into a spoiler-free overview of the plot, talk about what I liked about the book, what I didn't like about the book, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. John Darniel is still probably best known for being the lead singer and songwriter of The Mountain Goats. He's also written a couple of novels other than this one, uh, none of which I've read. This is the first of his stuff that I've read. This novel, Devil House, has a little bit of a complex plot, but I'll try to sum it up here. It is about a true crime author whose name is Gage uh, Chandler, and he has he's gotten some success. He's kind of a mildly successful author, and at the behest of his editor in, I think, roughly 2002, he hears about a case from 1986, and I believe it's Milpitas, California, where uh, it was reported that a bunch of teenagers killed a couple of people in this uh, this house, uh, the kind of titular devil house, and he, Gage, has been researching this case for roughly, I think, uh, until the kind of contemporary time, so roughly 15 years, and the kind of the mystery of the book is what actually happened that night, uh, why has it taken him so long to write this book, and uh, that's really what the book is about. Why has it taken him so long to publish this book about this house where the, the murders took place. And uh, I liked the, I think the, the book is well written. I think uh, Darniel's, I'm gonna mispronounce his name, so I apologize everybody. I think it's pronounced Darniel. Uh, John, uh, I, I think he's a good writer. I think he uses good word choices. I think he his sentence structure flows really well. I think he changes up tenses in the books. So there's some chapters, most of the book is written in first, uh, person. There's also some second person uh, work in the book, so a lot of yous. I thought that was actually really effective uh, in the book. I think there's one section in particular where he is referring to uh, someone he has worked with in the past. I'm just trying to be without uh, no spoilers here. He has worked with in the past, and I thought that that was she has written him a letter, and he's responding back to her letter. I thought that was really, really, really powerful. That particular section I thought was really good. I also think that um, the uh, the idea, the concept, the original seed of the idea the, of this author going to this house to do research, and it's been 15 years, and why hasn't it the work been done? What's going on? I thought was really an interesting thing as well. I think the problems I have are mostly from the execution. Uh, of that idea. I think the idea itself is, is cool. I think the problem is that John kind of gets in his own way and I think the book is more complicated than it really needs to be. I found that there are, because he is a uh, true crime author, he's always referring to past successes. So in addition to this story about Devil House, he's, he also, there are chapters about past cases that he wrote about. There's, a, there's about 10 to 15 pages where the book goes into a I don't know if it's a, a just a strange digression into almost medieval times that didn't really hang with the rest of the book. There's a chapter that's told from the viewpoint of one of Gage's childhood friends that also just felt unnecessarily complicated. Uh, so there's kind of the, the references of these cases um, that are a little confusing of why they relate 100% to the current Devil House thing. So I, I think that that kind of hurt the book. I think the ending f felt really rushed and confused. I think there are plot holes in the book that are never really resolved. I think that while the book is well written, um, it felt like those structural things were not really in place particularly strongly. Um, so those are more of the issues with it. I think that if the book had been whittled down, maybe... I don't know, 20, 30 pages could have been cut. And I think that if the book had been more streamlined, and it would have been easier to access. And some of these things could have been pared back to make it a little bit more of a less confused story. And I think it would have been a stronger work. And I think that the, maybe the plot holes would have been a little bit more easy to, to kind of spot. I think that where the book is strong is this idea, this theme of if you're someone who is a true crime author, what responsibility do you have when reporting uh, these kind of horrific stories that involve innocent people? And are you able to move past that? 
and do you have a responsibility to people moving forward and can you ever really tell the true full story uh, of anyone um, in the book I think when it does talk about those things that's not really the book doesn't spend a ton of pages working on that but I think that's kind of when the book is its strongest I will also say just for um, for anybody the one the people who I'd recommend it to the book remind me a little bit of City of Glass because it, it does kind of differ from the perspective of who's telling the story uh, and if you're someone who likes that or likes true crime I think you'd enjoy this I will say there's kind of a, a, a character who's going through a domestic violence situation and John doesn't really shy away from that so he describes that that could be troubling for a lot of people I think there's also an earlier case uh, there's pretty graphic descriptions of violence uh, and I think that could bother some people as well uh, so if you're someone who, uh, but overall, I think that it was a fun book. I think if you're someone who likes true crime and is interested in a pretty, uh, complex novel in the sense of like the book is not straightforward. It's really kind of hides in mysteries and kind of different paths that you have to kind of follow to get there. Uh, you may enjoy this. I, I think there were parts of it that I found a little frustrating, but overall, I think if you're a true crime fan, I think you'd enjoy it. Like I said, I think it is well written. And if you're someone who wants to just check out from like a craft standpoint how to do second person you, I, I think that it's done really well in a couple of places in this. So that's Devil House by John Darnielle. Next time I'm going to be reading either, reviewing either The Savage Detectives, which I'm about halfway through, or The Dawn of Everything uh, by David Graeber and David Wingrove. Um, Wingro. So until next time, please, if you enjoyed this, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment section in the comment below if you have read Devil House, what your thoughts were. Uh, from what I've gathered, I haven't read any reviews, but from what I've seen just on uh, the review places, it's a relatively split. Uh, so uh, I'd be interested to hear your opinion if you have read Devil House. Or if you've read any of his other stuff, Wolf and White Van or Universal Harvester, I'd be interested to hear that as well, how it differs from this. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching and bye.